Happy Star Wars Day, everyone. May the 4th be with you. To celebrate, I figured we'd do something very different and definitely special. Back in February, a fan, hello Andrew, asked me where I'd rank the latest Star Wars show and or among other titles in the franchise. I thought about it and realized I really didn't have any frame of reference to answer that question. I mean, if you ask me where it ranks among everything else, I need everything else ranked. So that's what I did. A project of that scale, however, is far too large for one crudely drawn avatar to accomplish on their own, so I got lifelong friend and fellow Star Wars fan Z-Bax to help me out. He may appear to you throughout the video either as his handsome self or a fellow crudely drawn avatar, so don't be alarmed if I'm joined on the couch. We streamed the whole ordeal on Twitch, well over four hours of mind-numbing debate, so we'll give you just the highlights. If some of the audio isn't quite up to par, I do apologize. This isn't like any other tier list though, because we weren't strictly ranking based on quality, or even preference. That factored in, but we mostly ranked every title, especially the new ones, according to how Star Wars-y it is. How closely these titles adhere to the spirit of the original trilogy and include recognizable tropes of that series. Which produced some, uh, interesting results. <laughs> I'm not gonna stall any longer, I'll get right to it. Without further ado, Here's every Star Wars film, ranked according to its Star Warsiness. Starlight awarded a battle-worthy clone Death Star for God. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty good. So I've split up some of the shows based on season. I've got Clone Wars 1 through 4. Not 1 through 4. 1 through 6. I do have it as 1 through 4. <laughs> um, no, so that's Clone Wars seasons 1 through 6 because I wanted to rank... Clone Wars Season 7 separately. This list is pretty much just stuff that I've seen. I figure you and I have probably seen most of the same thing. I haven't seen Rebels. I don't think you have, or Visions, or any of the other supplementary animated stuff. Mostly yeah. just the live action stuff. Yeah, Star Wars tier list. We're in it. We're doing it. Right, so Episode 4, A New Hope. Uh, I know where I'm putting this. How about you? Yeah. Who wants to go first? I Who wants to give the first verdict? You want me to? I know where I want to put it, but like, it's, there's so much nostalgia. Because like overall, I, I don't think it's like the best of the best. But uh, I'm going to personally, I think I'm going to put it yeah. in A. In A? A cinematics are just really good. It's it's almost like a, it's just a classic in every way. Like the acting, the script writing. I disagree with your ranking. Why? I think it deserves S. S, yeah. Uh, the sure. only reason, the only reason I, I'm... Yeah. hesitant on s because i feel like there's just a lot of nostalgia and i understand that here's the thing i know you're a lot more nostalgically influenced because you saw it from an earlier age and it played a bigger part in your childhood yeah. so as the slightly more objective friend let me assure you it deserves s yeah because right. here's the I thing like every time that i rewatch this film it is objectively amazing entertaining mm -hmm engrossing it just it pulls me in i'm totally like from frame one i am invested yeah. and i think more than anything else it sets the precedent for what star wars is yeah kicks off star wars it's yeah like the, it's so good and especially once we get out of the main stuff the main movies and into the supplementary stuff like the tv shows i think yeah you know episode four is a great sort of guide a great needle to figure out how star wars is this Right. If we're talking yeah. about how <laughs> right, true. how much do these shows add to or detract from the canon, right? And the original mm -hmm. intent of this franchise. Episode five, Empire yeah. Strikes Back. What do you think about that? I, I don't see any reason to hesitate for suspense personally. I'm also going to put this in S tier. Yeah, I don't I don't see any reason why not. I just feel like uh, I don't know, I just feel like I'm I'm uh I'm overrating it. Right. But if you think about it, it's, it's just, it's like a perfect movie. They're, you know, for what it's worth, we're not saying anything that the internet hasn't already said. Most people will say episode five is the best Star Wars of any yeah. Star Wars ever. I'm hesitant to put it above four just because four so clearly set the precedent. But if four defined what Star Wars and movies are, episode five redefined what Star Wars and movies are. Right. Again, so well structured so entertaining um script is and perfect it's hard to understand but the more research i do into this film the more i realize how much it broke away from what film was at the time and how it really redefined what action cinema was and how yeah. blockbusters yeah. were handled especially with um, episode four it was completely changed how people watch movies not watch movies but uh expect from movies 
I mean, it was right. released in like what seventy nine or something, nineteen seventy eight. That's just, oh, that's almost as old as my mom. <laughs> oh man! The more research I do into what films of the time were like, and the more that I see what this film did, the more you realize action films and thrillers as we know them today really emerged yeah. from what Star Wars did. Shall we move on? Yeah, episode six, Return of the Jedi. I haven't seen this one in a while. It's been a while since I've seen the OT, yeah. 1983. That's the other thing, just going on more about episode five, is episode five is is a loss for the heroes. Yeah. Which yes. you didn't see a lot back then. Yeah. They, they lose at the end of episode yeah. five. Yeah, that's also, I think, S tier, but below four and five. I agree. I think it's just the cherry I, on top. It is, right? I... I it's hard not to grade all of these as the complete package. Yeah, exactly. It only makes sense to grade that trilogy as a complete set. And as yeah. a complete set, it is the most Star Wars that Star Wars ever has been or ever will be, in yeah. my opinion. You you will never, in a million years, capture lightning in a bottle the way that Star Wars did. Yep, it's very true. Yeah, I think a steer for all three of those, at least to start this list. And we move on to the... Episode one. Newer ones. Phantom Menace, yeah. Phantom Menace was Qui-Gon Jinn, right? Exactly, yep. Yeah. I'm going to be honest, I really want to rank this higher than it deserves only because of Qui-Gon and <laughs> Darth Maul. Darth Maul. Yeah, right. Agreed. Because they, they are, especially looking outside of the film, and you shouldn't have to, obviously, it should all be in the film, but outside of the film, in the greater canyon, you know, it's well known that Darth Maul and Qui-Gon Jinn are such huge characters of the yeah. universe. They're such such influential characters. I think my favorite uh, Lego piece was the Darth Maul with the with the biotic legs. Oh, that dude! My favorite Lego piece. I loved that, that so much. So cool. Plus, double bladed lightsaber. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Can you yeah. get cooler? Obviously, not as cool as Darth Vader, but boy, does he come yeah. close. Yeah, episode one. Obviously, a few gripes with it is I think there's a lot of political intrigue in the film. That's some yeah. of the worst political intrigue I've ever seen written. Yeah, and, episode one and two. Yeah, and and this comes from a guy who loves political intrigue more than the average viewer. Like, I love when politics is written well, uh, and it is not written well <laughs> in, in yeah. The Phantom Menace. I'm yeah. trying to think if I have any more, any more gripes. I think... It wasn't as like cinematic as like episode four and five, like just the shots in it weren't as like captivating. It's funny. I was about to say like the exact movie. same thing. Yeah. When they air it on TV, it looks like a made for TV movie. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. And the special effects are not great. And yes, mm -hmm. I understand that it's 99, but two yeah. years later, <laughs> Eight, you 83. Have... 83. I'm oh, for. Sure. No, no, for Phantom Menace. Oh, was it? It was 91. 99? 99, yeah. Was Phantom Menace. I said 91, didn't I? Yeah, 99 was Phantom Menace. Yeah. What are, what so, other movies were released in 1999? Mm, the Matrix. Really? That was 1991? 99. Oh, yeah, Jesus Christ. My brain. Uh, yeah, you and I both. <laughs> 10 things I hate about you, The Matrix, and nothing Hill. Yeah. Huh. And that's... That's my grip, is I'm like, if you had the Matrix coming out with the loves, level yeah. of special effects it did in 99, there's no reason for the special effects in Star Wars to look as yeah. clean and honestly kind of crappy as they do. Yeah, I so, agree. It's just cheesy, yeah. cheesy feeling. It is, yeah. Outside of anything involving the, the Jedi, right? The Jedi Council, Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan, Anakin Skywalker, right? Outside of the yeah. Force central characters, it's very hard to take most of this film seriously yeah yeah Very um true. there there isn't much tension um and the writing is kind of lackluster which is something yeah. else that you know kind of pervades the rest of the movies of this trilogy yeah i agree so yeah where do we where do we want to put phantom menace it was the worst rated it... star wars film for a long time yeah yeah it was i remember my my dad hated episode one two three <laughs> just thought it wasn't star warsy enough no and i'm inclined to agree to, yeah to a I certain point i think the only reason it, it's even a thing is to give backstory to the birth of the empire and, and anakin yeah and i've heard arguments as to why the prequels are better than the sequels something else to keep in mind about the prequels is that this is not the gritty outer rim star wars that we see so much in the original trilogy right this is the pristine yeah. before the fall star wars yeah political. Um, yeah well, right everything's cleaner everything's 
up you know there's political political power distributed evenly throughout the galaxy right as opposed to one empire and the scruffy little rebels but it doesn't quite pull off the pristine before the fall look the way that other franchises do and for that reason it's it kind of fails on that front so what are you thinking i'm thinking c like tentatively yeah i was thinking like a, for, for a low b or c let's do c for now and yeah. it'll probably get reevaluated uh, one of the other arguments, though, that I have heard about the prequel trilogy is, like you said, it gives a lot of backstory to the Empire and to Anakin, which is valuable. Yeah. And it also, especially once we get to Episode 2, it outlines all of these little historical hints that had been heard of in the original trilogy. Yeah, but like, never explained. Right, like the Clone Wars. Yeah. Right? I mean, we waited twenty, almost 30 years for to find out what the Clone Wars really was in its entirety. Yeah. And the Clone Wars, I feel like it handles its political intrigue a little better with um, Obi-Wan being sent to Kamino to unravel this whole thing from... It's sifo right? Who ordered the clone army. Yeah, I feel like the political intrigue with Obi-Wan on his little side mission trying to uncover... You know, Meeting Jango He goes on Fett. a little spy mission. Yeah, Jango Fett. I feel like it's handled better than episode one was. Yeah, I agree. But it's very like... I don't feel like the the characters are very thought through and no is the clone wars where we get the majority of the relationship between anakin and padme yep and that's where uh their assassination attempt on padme i believe that oh, was that's episode right. two yeah, yeah and the, the the jedi council realized they made a mistake with obi-wan because uh obi-wan was too young to handle a padawan right and they start to see that in anakin and how he's yeah. going off the charts with how cool he thinks he is it's funny because everything that you just said kind of strengthens the film right you just lay down why the film is yeah. necessary in so many ways do we want to give it like a b or a high c i think, I think a little b, I low think b. Okay. better than one but i don't it's not like it's only better because it's almost progressed progressing in the story right it's doing more with the material that it's yeah been given yeah, although that romance writing is atrocious. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I was talking to you recently about um, Darling in the Franks and how I was doing mm-hmm. a video on that. Yeah, Darling in the Franks is like the anti-episode two. It's the best okay. romance with the worst plot. <laughs> and episode two is like a great plot with the worst romance. <laughs> so yeah. it's funny because I can't unsee that now that I think about it that way. I'm like, oh, Darling in the yeah. Franks. So Revenge of the Sith. I, I'm actually going to defer to you on this because I have only seen this movie once and it was a, a while ago. I remember liking it the most out of this trilogy, but what? what's your opinion? I think it was by far the best out of the trilogy. It's the, uh, but either way, I think, I think episode three is the best out of one and two. One of the few trilogies where the third is the best, right? The apex of everything happening. And I also feel like out of the entire original trilogy, again, it's because the downfall is occurring, but it feels like the most Star Wars-y. Yeah. And it's not afraid to get dark. Dark enough. Yeah. For what it's portraying. So, how do we feel about that? I want to say A. I I, I like it. Yeah? If not low S, I think it's it's really good. I'll agree with an A. Yeah. Yeah, let's put it in there. So now we come across our first TV show. Yeah, The Clone Wars. Wars. Oh, it has Seasons been a while. Music. Dude, I've seen it twice, and I don't remember most of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I was addicted um, to this. I was full on like, oh, you, you, oh you, man. Because it was the Star Wars of our generation. Yeah. It was the first taste of the franchise that had come out in a long time that you and I were actually there for. Even the yeah. prequel trilogy was sort of before us. Yeah, whereas Clone Wars is like, okay, this is new Star Wars content for us. Yeah, and it was, um, it was so good for what it was. It was. Um, you know, every time <laughs> there's a meme that somebody made that I think of pretty often, which is um, Clone Wars seasons one through three. It's like, oh, yippee, look at me, I'm going to war. And then seasons four through six, Oh my gosh, was that a child I just killed? It was. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. And it it shows, right, I mean, that meme alone shows how it really does a great job of conveying the, the overall political stance, right, of going from this glamorization of war that we see in episode two with Palpatine convincing the Senate to allow the clones, right? Like, yep. it'll be glorious, yep. it'll be brilliant. 
and then seeing that just devolve into the horrors of what intergalactic warfare really is obviously culminating in season seven with 66 which we'll get to oh remind me was it the first episode of, of clone wars how far before order 66 was that oh i don't know but i think it's a number of years yeah it would be like right after the clone war started right or i'm pretty like sure years into the war yeah i t- <sighs> is there a, a canon explanation for how long the clone wars lasted how long the clone wars last it, yeah it was a three-year war so the clone wars was oh, a was three-year it? war oh, okay. so that would make sense that the clone wars tv show pretty much branches all three years yeah um, because that's how it's presented and i suppose that's one of the merits of having a tv show that doesn't stick to a one particular timeline right because it bounces all over the place is you can sort of fill in the blanks of oh we're gonna go back to year one of the war oh okay now we're back in year two of the war really cover the whole time frame in a really unique fashion fashion i think i know where i want to put it Mm, i want to say a that's where i'm leaning I'm trying to decide above? whether it's a yeah above yeah, episode three or below. Out. It's hard because they're two different mediums, right? Yeah. This is this is where we come in, across this for the first time. There's so much content in Clone Wars, and because of that, so much of it is better. But there's also quite a bit that's worse. Yeah, um, the only stuff that's really worse because I really like the script writing was good, the the voice acting. Oh, yeah. Only thing that was worse is that they go non-canon, I believe, for a couple episodes or a few. There's a few uh, like plot holes, non-canon plot holes. That they yeah, kind of I think up. you're right. There, there are definitely a few. It goes off the rails here and there. Yeah, but for the most part, right? The central p- plot following Anakin, yeah. Obi Wan, and Ahsoka. Yeah, and I think it's, it's really good. Really I think it was captivating. I think even oh, it's yeah. the type of show that you could even watch, like when you're an early adult and you can still like find it interesting still watch it especially once you get first the past the first one or two seasons and yeah it, and the later seasons it really the finds st- its footing yeah the story starts to build because the first like one or i want to say one season it's almost like episode per episode kind of stories like there's no long-term thing happening it, yeah it's very self-contained it connects. yeah yeah but then once you get into later seasons it's like oh it's that's really good that self-contained episode we're actually gonna go back to that and add a more plot line to it which i've never yeah. seen a show it, do that yeah and it, it deals with like some some deep stuff some deep decision making some it's it pretty does. cool i like it so we still we need to decide above or below yeah. episode three again i've seen clone wars twice and there's a lot more to it that i remember i only saw episode three once forever ago but i'm in I f- my gut is telling me the overall quality of Clone Wars was slightly above Episode Three. Yeah, yeah. Like, it is hard. It's hard um, because they're both so pivotal to what Star Wars is. I think I want to put Clone Wars above Episode Three. All right. Um, I agree. And what I was saying too was the two main emotional leads, that being Clone Squadron, the Five Hundred First Legion, right? Following the fu- yeah. following the Five Hundred First. And also Ahsoka just end up as yeah. two phenomenal emotional tethers. I love the, the plot line for the 501st. So good. So it good. It really, really is. It made me buy um, every 501st Lego set I could possibly find. <laughs> yeah. Loved it. Yep, absolutely. You know, and the tragic culmination of their plot line in, in Season 7 is just, yeah. it's emotional. And in terms of what a war in the stars is going to be like, it's realistic. Yeah, now that I think about it more, I think I may, I would put the Clone Wars season one through four, or it's one through five, right? Oh, one, one through six. six one point. through six, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm this type. Yeah. Under episode three, and the, but season seven over episode three. Yeah, I can see that. I'm almost tempted to put season seven in S tier. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? No, granted obviously season seven doesn't stand on its own you have to watch seasons one through six yeah with the prequel trilogy and have an appreciation of what comes before and after it it has to stand on a lot it doesn't stand on on its own again just like with episode three as a piece of star wars that shows you how we get to episode four oh my goodness like it it shows so much it gives you so much context for where we're at going into episode four yeah um, I agree. In terms of the world building, right? And the quality is off the charts. You can also see like the graphics improve through each season. Season, like You totally can. You season can, yeah, you 1 can see. compared to season 7 <laughs> is insane graphic-wise. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and part of that is budget, obviously. But yeah, no, yeah. You, you can see the, <laughs> the generational leap with processing units as yeah. they go up and up. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I, I don't know if I put it in the same category though as episode four, five, and six. I. I it's I'd, tough. It's, I'd put it high tough. A for sure. I'd put it above three okay. for sure. But right. is it is it right under Return of the Jedi level Star Wars? You can I'll put I'll put it there for now. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna put it there for now as well. Yeah. Well, so far you and I are agreeing on pretty much everything. Yeah. We we can agree on the list so far, which is nice. So episode seven. Oh, okay. So these these the the episodes after Equal six, trilogy. yeah, seven, eight, yeah. and nine. I get so confused with what, especially with Rogue, not Rogue One. What is it, the last? Yeah, you're gonna have to last. remind me. Like the the Force Awakens of the Last Jedi. What? And the yeah. rise of yeah, I don't know. I, I'm lost with these three. <laughs> I've watched them so many I times gotcha. too. I watched this like a month ago. All three of them like a month ago. I still don't know. What's oh goodness! Happening. Right. So yeah. So Force Awakens. Right. We're introduced to our new trio. It's a lot of new material to take in compared to seeing as there's already so much canon to keep track of. Yeah. No. I. I as you're saying it, I remember the scenes and everything. I mean, I just watched this movie. It just gets mixed up with all the other with new gen the stuff. Star Wars movies. It's very similar to Episode Four, like the plotline for Ray. It's it's just oh, Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. A uh, an orphaned nothing from yeah. a desert planet a desert who ends planet. up getting swept up into <laughs> an intergalactic conflict yeah. in which they become the central character for blowing up a planet killing machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. It's, it's, it's a it's a recent, thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's. And that's kind of the whole sequel trilogy. It's yeah. just a reskin yeah. where they try a little bit of new stuff, but they don't take anything worthwhile from the previous canon. Yeah. And in fact, as we go through episodes eight and nine, especially, they end up contradicting and destroying the established canon <laughs> really? from the first two trilogies so yeah, yeah i re- I remember liking the graphics of episode seven eight nine like oh, yeah. just the the look of it i mean it's like they use all the the new gen technology and it just makes star wars come alive but it's just yeah episode seven storyline is just a just carbon copy of episode four with with a black guy and a female instead of it's just yeah. it, it felt a little weird. It's funny. It's it's a carbon copy of uh episode four, right? Yeah. You wanna put it in C for clone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I honestly think that's a that's a pretty good place for it. Yeah. Do we want to put it above or below above. Phantom Menace? Because honestly, I'd put it up. Ab- I'm gonna put it above. I'm gonna put it above too, just because it injects enough life into the franchise, and like you said, yeah. visually, I mean, it was very fun to watch. Every frame of Force Awakens is better than every frame of Phantom Menace. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'll agree with you with that. And, uh, and it felt it felt Star Warsy. Yes, just, that's a good point. It felt it very too Star Warsy. Right. <laughs> That's a weird complaint for this tier list, but yeah, I think you're right. Two Star Wars. All right. Episode eight. Episode eight. So this one was... You and I saw this in uh, theaters. Yeah, and this was was the one with the... the, They have this map to Skywalker, and they they have this last piece. Wait, no, that was episode nine. This is the one where they're at that desert planet. They end up on the salt planet, yeah. Um, The salt planet. The salt, yeah, with the white salt, and it looks red. Yeah, that was that was near the end, though. Right? Yeah, that's the end. I'm trying. That's the only yeah. part of the movie I remember, though. What's the rest of it? <laughs> the fact that you and I have to remember what this movie was about, I think, speaks for itself in terms of yeah. where this exists in our consciousness, and it ends up with them having to retcon several elements in Episode Nine. Yeah, and yeah. It's very, it's very like confusing and almost like they just go on these pointless side, side quests, quests just to ill time yeah exactly it's almost like a bad tv show yeah 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 for it's like two and a half hours long (laughs) right and then the best part of the movie is also the worst part of the movie when everybody takes the escape pods down to the salt planet and Mm -hmm. the leader of the alliance ship decides to hyperdrive it into the enemy Mm -hmm. ship you remember that yeah the most visually stunning scene that breaks all of the Star Wars lore. Yeah. Because if you can just hyperdrive a ship into another <laughs> ship, why do you need anything besides... Why do you need fleets? Yeah. Yeah, if you can just 
take a star cruiser and ram it into another star cruiser at light speed yeah it makes uh deep space warfare completely obsolete yeah yeah but it, it looked beautiful but it looked amazing <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's like that's the moment when star wars went down the hole but boy did it look good boy yeah. did it look good on the way out yep and also the the salt planet battle that looked good too oh like that the, the again cinematography variety. off the chain yeah it's just ridiculous where where we <sighs> it's where are we looking that's bottom of c yeah i could bottom of c i could put that there okay i could i could almost put eight and nine in the d but yeah it, we'll we'll see do, about that i do like but... watching eight it was it was cool the, the salt planet thing it's really where the sequel trilogy goes from oh this is a rehash but i get it it's you know episode right episode seven is yeah. okay we're just copying episode four but seeing as we're trying to get a new generation on board star wars i can kind of excuse that you're playing it safe i get it yeah there you go you've made a billion dollars now do something exciting right and yeah instead of doing something exciting they make episode eight which just yeah. breaks everything and you're like okay now it's falling apart so which what was what was nine so episode nine is yeah and for me it's the fact that right even with you explaining there are several admittedly far-fetched but plausible routes they could have gone down right for why he's yeah. alive but they never confirm anything in the movie which is why it kind of leaves itself open as a plot hole yeah um, i think i'd agree yeah yeah and it, it's just a lot of people were speculating that if um snoke wasn't behind the first order and behind right mm. everything which we see in episode eight he wasn't because he gets killed yeah. Um, yeah a lot of people were actually speculating that it was darth plagueis who was behind everything and he was still alive and that he was still alive yeah which huh. i would have preferred because then you're not resurrecting a character who very clearly got thrown into the core of a death star but the fact that they just bring back palpatine because he's a familiar face and they don't confirm how he was brought back yeah. even though there are potential possibilities for how he was brought back that's kind of what yeah i agree I, i'd off. call that a plot hole yeah the best part of episode nine is Kylo Ren. I'm, I'm just going to say his redemption yeah. is the best yeah, part. His, yes. And like, it's not just the best part of a bad movie. Like it's genuinely good. Like it actually, what they, yeah. how they ended up salvaging his character actually makes me genuinely excited and happy. Yeah. Genuinely, I agree. genuinely happy about the, the way they wrote his character, even though yes, it could have been better, but it was good enough for me. Yeah. And um, I think the, also the movie looked very good. Once again, it was oh, the, yeah. the fight inside the destroyed, like the death star the destroyed star destroyer. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Parts of the death star. Yeah. Parts it? of the death star on, yeah, on Yavin. On their planet. Yeah. yeah. That, Which, I think that was really oh, cool. Such a cool aesthetic to see. Yeah, I just think, yeah, to see it just looks so good. Yeah. And then once they were on the planet with uh with Palpatine, I think that also looked very cool. That was a cool aesthetic. I love that cult like Yeah. Film. I loved the art direction for yeah. episode nine. Yeah. Love the art direction for the Sith homeworld and for Yavin and the Death Star. It was all just brilliant. I, I like I want more of it right like i yeah. want to go back to yeah. the to the sith homeworld yeah. and see more of that place but you know episode nine trying to get the sequel trilogy back on track just wasn't able to to do it right i, I think it's it was kind of too far everything had fallen apart by episode eight and there were so many brilliant elements introduced in episode seven that didn't get used by episode nine like the knights of ren do you remember yes. them yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. kylo ren's personal mm -hmm. sith those, companions those were the coolest i, I mean uh, but once again that's like a carbon copy of uh is it darth vader's guys in red those guys that darth, were in the all red suits the all red suits were the imperial guard imperial guards yeah yeah, yeah, for yeah. Palpatine. they were they had those they had like the electric uh Spears, know, staffs i guess some sort of electric yeah i thought it was a staff yeah. but no, because what was cool about the Knights of Ren is they weren't, like, a clear personal guard. It was more like a yeah. mercenary group of yeah, mercenary Sith group. Yeah. acolytes. Yeah, and they, were all ha they all had their own style and weapons. Exactly. Using, but they were working perfectly together. It was yeah. very, very cool. It's I like, I, oh, oh my gosh, like, forget the Bad Batch. I want, like, a Knights yeah. of Ren <laughs> spinoff. I want to see what the Knights that of Ren were really all about. Cool. Um, that yeah. really cool. And the fact that they were, again, along with Kylo probably one of the coolest grittiest uh, again i like grit i like when things get gritty the fact that they were arguably one of the coolest aspects of the sequel trilogy and they just didn't get used at all they don't even show up in episode eight it's i believe they show up in episode nine though. they do yeah, uh, yeah they show up in episode nine and they are clearly loyal to the emperor not to kylo yeah. 
because after his redemption, that's who Kylo fights. He yeah. fights the Knights of Ren, yeah. Episode 9 also does really, really weird stuff with the Force. Yes. Like, really canon-breaking stuff with the Force. Yeah. That's all I can think I, about to talk about. I would put it uh, definitely below Episode 7. Oh, for sure. I'm thinking of putting it below Episode 1, but above Episode 8. Really? You still think it's better than episode 8? I still think it's better than episode 8, yeah. Because it, just because of the, the plot building of Kylo Ren is better than... Just because of Kylo stuff. Ren. <laughs> yeah, I honestly think it was more interesting to watch. It was, it was, I think it was just better overall. Very good rating compared to episode 8. I'll tell you what, I'll admit, I think about episode 9 more than episode 8. Same, it's more memorable. Yeah, it's more, more memorable. Almost Star Wars feeling. Uh, you're right, as canon breaking as it is... It's not this weird, like, oh, we're trying to escape the First Order, we're running out of fuel, we need yeah. to crack a clo- code, total yeah, non-Star Wars side subplot. quests. Yeah, that, yeah. you're right. It is yeah. it it is very focused on bringing, reining everything back into the central plot. You're seeing these plots change and these characters develop and how they feel and deciding who they're loyal to, which is, I feel like, more Star Wars-y than, than space battles. For sure. That makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's got a better emotional tether than episode eight yeah this is interesting because i going into this expected us to put episode nine dead last out of the main yeah canon but as we're talking about it no i i agree with you that i think the plot is atrocious it's so contrived mm. and there are so many things that just even in the world of star wars just don't make sense like c3po not be able not being able to speak sith yeah and not being able to translate weird, the dagger yeah. and the fact that the dagger which was wielded by a sith mercenary we- is... Yeah, it was a bounty hunter, like a like a B class bounty hunter, not even a good one. Yeah, we never hear about bounty hunter wielding a Sith knife that was forged after the second Death Star in the image of the Death Star, so that you can use the yeah. knife to track where the map, where the Sith map is on the second Death Star, which Palpatine was keeping on the second Death Star, for... which yeah, was no, in ruins. Which... So some so. Yeah. Right. Ruins that, by the way, are still, despite being crashing to a planet, ruins that are still constructed enough to where you can yeah. recognize where on the Death Star the map is going to be hiding by using the knife that a B-class bounty hunter was using. Yeah. Yeah, it's the deeper you look into the plot, and the knife especially, it just gets so bad. It's yeah, yeah. I, I just never, I just did not understand why that that B class bounty hunter had the had, had the a knife. Sith knife. Had... No, no one's heard about this guy. Like I don't think he was ever mentioned. No, not previously. And, yeah, and he's just he's the one with the key to everything. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, he ends up somehow with what's probably was Lord Palpatine's personal dagger. Like how? Yeah, no, it's it's just yeah, it's it atrocious plot really lines. Yeah. yeah, episode. Eight is contrived and boring, but episode nine is just almost a non-existent plot. It's been so blendered. Yeah. That said, yeah, right, I, I it, agree. it does have a better emotional arc for several characters, and it looks better. Right, it is. Yeah. It's got better yeah. cinematography and art direction. Yeah. So I. <clears throat> Yeah, so episode nine going in, what, C? You want to put it above Last Jedi? Yeah, I think above Last Jedi, but not not by much. I'm willing to do that, but on the condition that we bump episode eight down to D. Yeah. yeah I, yes. I Right, again, trying to use the whole tier list. It's close. You, you could even maybe even put episode nine in D, but above eight. We'll figure that out. We'll We'll tweak it. We'll mess with it. All right, I got a plate of nachos, and I just cracked open my personal stash of ginger ale. Awesome. All right, so uh, so Rogue One. Rogue One. So this is the one with with Jin, Jin and Urso. Andor. Yeah. Who's the third? Oh, and Andor's robot, right? Yeah, I know personally where I want to put this. It's probably a controversial pick. This is easily A tier for me. I think it's a very good standalone movie. I do not think it contributes anything to the plot or, or Star Wars whatsoever. I just really? doesn't like I don't think so. I don't think anyone was really wondering like where did the Death Star come from kind of thing. Right. You know? How how did the rebels get the Death it's Star just, plans? Yeah, it's very it's just kind of they kind of assumed it was some kind of story like this, some some rebel story like this, and I feel like it, it's just not really needed for right. the Star Wars universe. It wasn't it, it was kind of just a a standalone story but i think overall it's pretty good for being a standalone story yeah it feels star warsy it doesn't have any 
plot holes. Yeah, I can't really think of anything wrong with it that I didn't like. I enjoyed watching it. So right. I, I, I give it a low A. For low a, the other reason, and this is, again, part of the controversiality. For me, it comes down to aesthetic. Because mm-hmm. when, it com- when I say Star Wars, obviously you think of uh, Jedi and Sith and intergalactic battles and whatnot. Yeah. But when I say, like, an intergalactic conflict, right, you think about mm-hmm. something a little less fantastic and a little more gritty, right? And yeah. these stories of just trying to make it from planet to planet so that you can deploy your next legion, just trying to make it by scraping by in these foreign, yeah. hostile, alien, bizarre landscapes. Um, yeah. You know, when you think about an actual war epic, like if you were to go into the Star Wars universe and try to do a documentary on what the war is actually like on the ground, that's mm. what this story is. Yeah. Um, and for me, seeing the Star Wars universe through a different lens like that, where it's not all about fantasy, it's not all about lightsabers, it's not all about the Force, it is about what is a realistic intergalactic conflict going to look like for those on the forefront of the front lines and that was a perspective i didn't think we'd ever see and i'm so glad that it actually happened yeah but for being that perspective i didn't i didn't feel like it was very like warlike it wasn't very like realistic it wasn't gritty enough it was still too like polished the fight seemed very uh like almost predictable but maybe i'm just remembering it incorrectly maybe it's been a while since you and I have, have seen it. I know I've, that. Oh, yeah. I think I saw it when it came out, and I've, I don't think I've seen it since. Gotcha. Yeah, I watched it once a few years ago again. And I remember yeah. really liking it. It was just, I didn't, I just, I didn't feel like it was, it was needed. You don't feel like you can rank it high in terms of Star Wars-iness. Yeah. Well, yeah. See, that's the thing. It felt very Star Wars-y to me. It just did not feel, it was, it just, it just didn't feel connected to the, to the universe almost. It just felt almost separate. Gotcha. Oh no, so it's hard to explain now. No, I I'd give it a high B or a low A simply because it, it was I just thought it was very well rounded, very good. It's the plot was very good. It's hard to justify putting it above something like Revenge of the Sith, that's for sure. Um yeah. because of how pivotal a part Revenge of the Sith plays in exactly, the canonicity yeah. of of the world. Um But that's the thing with Rogue One and and also with Andor when you get to it is it's kind of the black sheep it doesn't easily slot in with everything it really stands out which is both to its benefit and its detriment yeah I know a lot of people have pointed out some plot holes or where the script could have been better I've seen videos like that and I agree with most of the critique as much as I personally love this film or want to love this film I'm willing to go high B let's go all right you want to do above Clone Wars yes or Attack of the Clones yeah I should I, I think yeah yeah I think it's a. I think it's a lot better than Attack of the Clones. Oh yeah, I, I would. I would rewatch it any yeah. day. Give me, but, yes. uh, yeah. All right then. Solo, Star Wars story. Solo. I have. S- I forgot this existed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember watching it when it came out, or mm-hmm. like a year after it came out. Uh, I have not seen it since. I actually. Yeah, I think- remember most of the opening for i remember most of the first act and that's about it um i want to say i remember i remember the whole thing is this is the one where i'm i'm very glad to see you and i remember this film on equal terms yeah everything that you described i could have described and nothing more (laughs) yes I like seriously like, like if we were sequestered from each other and we had cops questioning us our stories would line up <laughs> exactly because I cannot tell you anything more than what you just told me yeah I remember it yeah. being very captivating it was very like it's very action movie-esque very like, almost fast-paced yeah. with these plot twists it, and this it and was that. actually pretty good yeah, it, yeah I did find it pretty good it, it filled in some holes of like how we got the Millennium Falcon uh, how he found Chewbacca. I just found the Chewbacca thing a little weird. That's, how, was weird. that's how they decided that Han and Chewbacca met. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not a bad film. It is yeah, decent. No. It is okay. It is I fine. It's like a put f- a lot of time into it, I feel like. Yeah. Oh well yeah, I mean they had it went through a bit of production hell. There were oh, a really? lot of a lot of issues that it faced, but ended up working out in the end. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was very good. But it was it was great, but we kind of run into the same issue that we run into with Rogue One, yeah. in that it's 
I don't think it's as good as Rogue One. I actually like Rogue One better mm. on a plot level. But I feel like Solo is another backstory that nobody asked for yeah. and doesn't really matter. Yeah. Like I, 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 I feel like it matters even less than Rogue, than Rogue One. One. Yeah, I also feel like Rogue One feels more like Star Wars Solo doesn't. Solo yeah. kind of feels you you could kind of take Solo and put it into any generic um sci-fi story yeah. setting and not really lose much. Yeah. I agree. Like, there's no involvement with the Empire or the yeah. Rebels at all. Yeah. Um, there's, yeah. No Force. Yeah. No lightsabers. Unless I'm right. forgetting something. Yeah. And as much as it does to fill in, like, Han's backstory and plot points and give us a lot of, like, oh, yeah, hey, this is how he ended Han, up yeah. where he is. Yeah. Th- I feel like there's still stuff missing. Or, like, yeah, they... Well... They could have done stuff differently. Yeah, because it was just his childhood that they kind of like touched. Not childhood, but like early adulthood that he they touched on. And yeah, Han is kind of known for having so much experience across the galaxy with all these stories and all these people that he knows. So like, even with an entire and, movie based on him, we still don't really know. Yeah, and, and that kind of attests to I think how he was written in the original trilogy mm. is he's this like mystery smuggler. Yeah. Yeah, like he's the mystery guy. He's like Jack of all trades you know? with the yeah. fast he's draw like, oh, on the gun. With all this right, experience. Like, oh, I've been places. I know things. And yeah. when you try to show where he's been and what he knows, it kind of takes away from the mystery. Yeah. That that makes his power as a mystery as a wild card yeah. so intriguing in in the original. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So where do we want to slot it? I'm looking at the B class, but I'm I'm not I don't know if I I was I was going to jokingly say F since you and I literally <laughs> remember this for forgotten. Yeah. And I'm like here's the thing. It's a it's a good movie, but it's not really a Star Wars E movie. Yeah, it's not Star Wars at all. I wouldn't That's say That's kind of the issue. That's yeah. kind of what holds it back. It it doesn't really feel Star Wars y. Right. And I mean, I almost like you said, I almost forgot to put this on the list. Yeah. I almost forgot that it existed. I, it's um, one of those movies you literally for, you don't think of it when you think Star Wars. No. Yeah. And, and even when you do, it's not not top of the list. Could so. it, we, we honestly F is not bad for this movie because it's no. Again, just going by the criteria that we're ranking, right? Yeah. We're not ranking them based on which film is best. We're ranking them based on which is the most yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, because if I was comparing this to, that. like, other films at the same time, I'd say it's it's not bad. It's pretty good. It's fun to watch. But, like, for Star it, Wars films, yeah, it's not Star Wars. Yeah, I think... Right. Are, are we both agreed? I, I think it could go in F. I think it's F, yeah. Yeah. Our first F. Yeah moment of silence i right, should we move on to the next one real quick let's do it i'm gonna take a bite of nachos so All tell right. me what you think about season one of the mandalorian the mandalorian oh my god it's so good it's one of those things that it's like the kind of the same thing as rogue one and solo you're thinking like why why do we care why what's the what's the point of this but it's such a cool setting i don't even know it's just in general i just think it's it's a mystery Everything about the Mandalorians is a mystery. We don't know anything about them except like the coolest characters in all of Star Wars were Mandalorians, or at least had Mandalorian armor. <laughs> so that's yeah. like the only thing we know. I think it's it's a really cool like backstory for something that we don't get anything at all of in in any Star Wars anything. I think you put it perfectly. Like, why do we care about this? Because it's cool. Yeah, right. because it's cool and, and we don't going, you don't see it. Yeah. And looking back at the original trilogy and why we love it so much, right, compared to other stuff, it's like because nobody did what Star Wars did in terms of aesthetic. Yeah. It's just right. It's just cool. Yeah, it's really cool. It's very, very well done too, in terms of just everything. Very the time well they put into it. It's just insane. Yeah. They they it was clearly a passion project for being the first of the Disney product getting churned out at a regular rate yeah it there was passion put into it it was clearly yeah loved by the people who, who wrote and directed and crafted it that the ig88 i think that was a cool cool twist 
Like, a cool thing that they added. And brilliant way to bring, like, the first chapter, like, chapter two, episode two of the series, the very beginning, and wrap it around itself to make it a nice, clean, overarching narrative. And the IG-88, right, robot going Mm -hmm. from this merciless killer and being reprogrammed into a savior. Yeah. Mirrors Mando's own Mm -hmm. whole personal arc, which is going from being a lowly lost bounty hunter to finding purpose in saving the child. Yeah. And right. And, and mentoring and fathering and providing for Grogu. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was really cool. Yeah. Season one was handled extremely well and felt Star Warsy. Yes, it did. In my opinion. Yeah. So now we just got to figure out where to rank it. No, it's high. Well, I'm going to compare this to the Clone Wars. Uh, I think it was better than the Clone Wars, but less canon, if that makes sense. I yeah, think- I agree. It it doesn't service the overall... Well, as far as we can tell, right? We, we, we yeah. don't have a season three yet, but yeah. it doesn't service the overall canonicity. But in terms of quality and the feeling of feeling like you're in a, a Star Wars show, feeling like you're in yeah. a Star Wars world yeah it, it totally cements itself mm, i don't know I, i'd put this high a or I'm, s i'm tempted to put it between clone wars seasons one through six and seven yeah a or s though See, I thought you had Clone Wars Season 7 and A, but you put that in low S. Oh, I thought that's what we decided there. No. Well, well I don't recall. Oh, but okay. I'm, I'm okay. moving it up to S. Oh, okay. I'm moving it up to S because I agree with you. Because <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, so do you want to put Mandalorian top of A? Yeah, that's what I was yeah. I was thinking. One and two, or, or are we separating the two? No, we're separating them because I've got opinions on Season 2. Yeah. I season two is still very well done i don't think it's as good as season one though why is that i think season two um takes the worst part of the plot of season one that being Mm. this mission hopping yeah and kind of makes it the whole thing mandalorian season two is just going from place to place to place to place trying to figure out where grogu belongs and how we can help him yeah i agree yeah major plot developments of course it's very tightly written but after episode four or five of season two, I just felt like, okay, this just feels like we're... Side questing. Like, side questing. Yeah. yeah. I agree. You turned your main quest into a side quest, and it's kind of not very fun. Yeah. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, the other thing about oh. Mandalorian season two is it kind of reaches a little far to bring in other characters that we care more about to make the show itself more relevant, which I didn't feel like it needed to do. Was it was season two the one with Ahsoka, right? Yes. So they bring Ahsoka mm. in, which is fine, but they also bring Luke in, yeah. and they also bring in Boba Fett, and they also bring in um, the Marshal yeah. from Tatooine. So it's it's one of those things where, again, very very well done, all things considered, but it feels like you're just roping in. You're trying to connect this whole web of characters to make the show the yeah. show kind of ends up as a bit of like a cameo fest yes, halfway through. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I didn't like how they did it. I like how they did Ahsoka. I did not like how they did Luke. It just didn't, it felt weird. It didn't feel like Luke and his personality. And he was, there was no purpose for for what Luke was doing or why he was there or what he's been doing. Like, it's just nothing. I just thought Luke was well, very random. There's no explanation but we know that Grogu sent out a signal in the Force yeah. right, to make himself known. And Luke, at this time, we know from the sequel films that Luke is trying to build a Jedi Academy. He yeah. is seeking out Force sensitive younglings to train yeah. them. But wouldn't so, so this so this is then it's implied that this is the first one that he's found. I don't know if it's implied that it's the first, but it's well, he doesn't I, have a he doesn't have a he isn't. Isn't he making it with all those like little robot things? He's making the uh, Jedi Academy, and he says yes. that Grogu oh, would be the yeah. first one to join it. Yes, that's a good point. So yes, this would be the first. 
Okay. I totally forgot about that. I don't know. It just doesn't um, feel like it doesn't feel like Luke, bro. It just doesn't. I don't know. No, I, I think some of that comes down to the technical limitations. Yeah, and I, there's no um, no personality in in anything about him in this show. Which is why I feel like it isn't as good as season one. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. Now, I, now that I think about it, I think season one is definitely what hooked me. Yeah, and the oh, I mean, end. Season one, season one carried the launch of Disney Plus. Yeah, and like the last, was it the last episode of season? Two? No, was it what? What was the last episode of season two? He's with Grogu this decides one... to come back, right? No. Um, the last episode of season two of Mandalorian is they're on Moff Gideon's cruiser and Luke comes to save them and pick up Grogu to take Grogu away to his Jedi Academy. No, that wait, what? Wait, okay. no, because you're, then you're, you're thinking of, you're thinking of when Luke was building the Jedi Academy and Grogu chooses to go back to the Mandalorian, right? Yeah. That's in book of Boba Fett. That's Boba Fett. Yes. Jeez. That does not happen in The Mandalorian. That is Book of Boba Yo, Fett. Oh, bro, cool. Thank you so much for the raid, bro. What, did we? Are we? Did we decide where to put it or no? I'm I'm tempted to put it mid or high B. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Except when I saw the B category, I saw Rogue One, and I honestly don't think it's better than Rogue One. You don't think it's better than Rogue One? No. I well, think... I appreciate that because I I agree. I'm. I, I, I love Rogue One, so <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't um, love Rogue One. I just feel I just watching it. I think it's better. It's overall better than yeah. season two. Do you want to put it under Rogue One then? And I above think so. Universe? I think it's better than yeah. than Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Book of Bobo Fett. I know where this goes for me personally. Already. Yep. Honestly, uh, I. What are, what are your thoughts? I only liked it because of how much it tied into uh to the Mando. But I, it I don't think it's very good overall when it comes to like any anything. <laughs> I think it's an F below Solo. <laughs> yeah. I, I I think this is the worst Star Wars property it's, that we've been given in recent years. They they obviously did not have very much of a budget and did not spend a lot of time on this. I think there's just and no I, characters. Here's What's the thing, too. I think that coming off of season two of Mandalorian, they just wanted to get on the hype train yes. with Boba Fett. Yeah, so they it. rushed it out. No story, no budget. I agree. And I think the only reason people watched it is, be like me, because of the Mandalorian. That's the only reason. Yeah. Just to fill in the yeah, gaps of the Mando, because you can't get enough Mandalorian. Exactly. So, so Yeah, but it, like, um, I, I, think it's, <laughs> I think it's terrible. <laughs> It's so boring. It's, it's so... script. It's like it's cheesy to the point where you're watching it. And you're like, Ooh, well, oh, it's, oh, it's yeah. physically cringy sometimes. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not pretty. Yeah, I, I, I it's really not pretty. I don't get behind that. Yeah. Oh, we're to uh, Obi Wan. Right. Obi Wan. Oh, I've got to do. I have not watched this. I've got to do believe. the talking for this now, huh? Yeah. Obi Wan. Um. It's not good. Is it? It's, it's really not good. Oh, um, man. The best performance, without a doubt, is Ewan McGregor returning mm. as Obi-Wan. He's yeah. brilliant, but Obi-Wan is written to be this very cynical, faithless, mm. uh, you know, after the Jedi Purge, he's just, he, all he wants to do is keep his head low and try to survive with his only hope being that maybe one day a young Luke Skywalker will become force sensitive. Yeah. And the plot revolves around Princess Leia gets kidnapped by the Sith Inquisitors to try to lure out Obi-Wan, which works because Bail Organa contacts him mm. to have him save Princess Leia. And then it's just this romp of of a very cynical Obi-Wan Kenobi bringing around an eight-year-old Princess Leia who he's dragging along the ground with a leash because she's a child <laughs> who can't control herself, and she whines about everything. And it's just a cynical old dude <laughs> flinging around a whiny child from one place to another. It's basically the plot of Up, but with all of the pumps <laughs> out of it. Where where would you put this? I don't... Oh, goodness. 
<laughs> I don't even want to think about that. Where do I put this? Are there any like notable characters that they that, that are in this? There you go. Obi Wan. Actually, Darth Vader makes an appearance. Darth Vader makes an wait. What? Darth yeah. Vader makes an appearance. Yeah, there are two confrontations. Okay. And yeah, the show is about Obi Wan regaining his faith in the Force and learning to understand that the Jedi Purge was a necessary balancing act for the Force and that now that everything is tipped to the dark side, it will come back to being a balance when the time is right. And he comes to understand that the time will be right when Luke is ready. So he goes from being this cynical, we've lost, the dark side has won, it's awful, just go into hiding and try not to get killed. And it okay. and it's about his transformation into okay. No, I understand that we lost because it was a necessary correction of the force, and there will be a time when balance returns to the force and the empire is taken out, and mm. we will see the light of day again. You know. Okay, that, so, that doesn't sound terrible for character development. And no, plot. no, Obi Wan's character development is pretty good. Yeah, but like I said, for saying that that's the message they're trying to convey with him going from being cynical to regaining his faith and having a greater understanding of his place in the force in the universe the plot that they chose to convey that theme really doesn't make any sense lacking yeah yeah and I'm, then, I'm still gonna watch it but oh yeah i mean it's you and mcgregor go for it um yeah. if you watched book of boba fett you can watch this let's put it yeah. that way um but yeah, the plot is not great. There are several plot elements that's like, oh, wow, you really, you did that. Okay. Like, uh, the joke is that it turns into a cartoon sometimes, because that's exactly okay. what happens. You're like, wow, that was a really cartoony way to solve that. Yeah. And issue. it's like, yeah. it's solve that issue. Yeah, like, things that just realistically would not work at all. It's totally illogical. But, no, I would say it's, especially as a diehard Star Wars fan, it's worth watching for the interaction between Darth Vader and and obi-wan because they have two scenes together the first of which is fine but the second of which is like wow if you could have just made the entire tv show like that one scene you it would have been a banger so okay. yeah it's there's a lot of missed potential, but i'd be interested in in seeing what you think but for yeah. me so where would you where would you rank it uh i'm gonna put it just above book of boba fett oh I, yeah oh nev on f yeah i think solo is a more entertaining watch than this is and again it's like oh but what does it do for the star wars canon yeah not really anything it's a cool showing of obi-wan regaining his faith in the force but even that as a message is not central so you're just kind of like you know it just feels weird and like i said the the execution is awful the quality alone really drags it down, in my opinion. There are not really great performances, except for Ewan McGregor. And yeah, I, I really wish the show and the plot overall would have focused more on him and his struggle. It's, uh, like I said, if you can watch Book of Boba Fett, you can watch this. Watch it's that. it's far more yeah. relevant to a character that we already love. And yeah, who, who knows? Maybe you'll watch it and yeah. uh, we'll, we'll come back to this after a few more shows have been released and we'll sort of re-rank some stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm worried that there's going to be more Fs uh, coming me out in too. the future. Me, me too. Just <laughs> random side shows on characters we didn't really think about on non-canon stuff that happens in their lives. And it's just going to yeah. be a lot of those in the future with Disney. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid of that as well. But yeah. Speaking of side characters we forgot about, yeah. which lives we don't really <laughs> <laughs> care about, uh, Andor! <laughs> What yeah. do we want to do with uh, with Andor? Talk about a show that's like, it's not Star Wars in literally any way whatsoever. No. I no. don't even think a gun, or like a laser gun or a starship is even shown for episodes upon episodes that has anything to right. do with Star Wars. Like, there's right. no Star Wars whatsoever in this. Yeah, but it's, no, it's a really good show. Is. But it's a fantastic show. Right. Yeah. Aside from the pacing, which I thought the pacing was a little slow. Aside from the pacing, like holy cow, is this well written, well structured, and does it have a solid message and theme that is central yeah. throughout the entire production? Yeah, and I really like the. I really love his uh, his character. I just mm -hmm. some cool scenes like the the prison scene where they they escape the prison. That whole thing. Oh, yeah. 
It's completely it's pointless to anything Star Wars, but it's just cool to watch. It was, it was just... yeah. Well, I was talking about it with with somebody else, and they pointed out that really the whole point of Andor is it's sort of the same theme that Rogue One has with Jin Erso realizing that she has personal reasons to fight in the rebellion. Yeah, yeah. but Andor is all about realizing that when you have tyranny and a dictatorship that is ruling over you you can't not pick a side you yeah. will you will be either crushing people or you will resist mm-hmm. the crushing because otherwise you will get crushed and even the when you are the oppressor exactly and even when you do nothing right which andor tries to do he right he 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 plays his part in the rebellion with aldani mm-hmm. and storming the aldani base and he gets out of that and he's like whatever i did my part and goes off and does nothing, and the Empire still points to him at random and says, I'm going to lock you up and yeah. f- and force you to live the rest of your life as a cog in my machine. You know, his understanding that the way the Empire treats you compared to the way the Rebellion treats you, while both are equally raw in how mm. they are using you, right? The Rebels aren't nice. Yeah. They don't bring them a cake yeah. and say, hey, thanks for thanks for fighting for us. Like, it's... yeah. It's raw, and it's yeah. a very realistic depiction of war and espionage. Yeah, and when they um, they get the when they're doing the funeral, uh, yeah. for his mom, and then the, he kind of gets the whole whole town to just screw the the empire. Yeah, I thought that was that was yeah, a really like, cool scene. How that kid had a bomb, and he just kind of blew up the whole place. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it just was goes awesome. to hell. Yeah, it, it was pretty. Cool. Yeah, it's a satisfying conclusion to the buildup of the show. Yeah, but it's like it's almost like two two steps away from Star Wars because it's based on a character who's in Rogue One. Yeah. And Rogue One's already a not very like it's not Star Wars canon. It's not very specific to the plot. I mean a little bit. But it's yeah. him himself, Andor, he's not central in any plot of the Star Wars really. And then we get a whole but, entire side story on him. But as a side story following a side character who's not pivotal to the Star yeah. Wars franchise, since that's the obvious direction we're going to expand the Star Wars universe, yeah. my goodness, does it do better than anything we have in the F tier right now? Very, yes. Yeah. Right? Because oh, like, yeah, just like Rogue that. One, it takes what Star Wars is, right? It takes the setting of Star Wars and uses it as a paint to color in a different picture. Yeah. Like, it, it uses Star Wars to tell relevant and engaging stories and commentary on the nature of power and tyranny and rebellion yeah and war yeah, yeah but like when it comes to, to star wars it's right. not it's, it, it's, it's not. another part of the star wars that doesn't have the lightsaber fighting or it has nothing i mean it's, it's got a little planet hopping but no it, it forsakes yeah. all of the it forsakes all of the fantasy elements I guess yeah. it's a, it's a little more Star Wars than like Solo because at least Andor is, is he's fighting the Empire. Solo is right. it's his own thing, his own gang related warfare kind of thing. So I, I guess in that way it's it's Star Warsy because it's the whole underdog fighting the the oppressor. Jeez, is it like? <laughs> it's not. I just don't understand how they even came up with this. Like how they yeah. got. A bunch of people to give them money to come up with this like it, it turned out great it was just like you're gonna make a show on a completely random character from a non-pivotal movie in the star wars franchise it's, it's just very right. very random Andor is absolutely s tier in terms of shows that we didn't realize we needed that turned out yeah really fantastic yes. that shows yeah. i'm not gonna lie Andor is addicting like I, I could that could be like a oh, six or seven season show right there and because there's no established timeline in terms of yeah. when it happens compared to Rogue One, yeah, no, you, you could run on with a espi- with a space war espionage thriller yeah. for some time. And even just season one, I mean, you could do a deep dive on season one and everything that it has to say about not only the nature yeah. of the characters, but the messages and themes overall. So are you looking to put this? So are we putting an F above Solo because of the non Star Z, or is it Star Wars <laughs> enough to put it? Well, we've got Rogue One in B, and again, yes, Andor is certainly less relevant than Rogue One. It it's clear that the quality of Andor is driving it. The quality of Andor yeah. is what's keeping it head and shoulders above several other properties, even though they are objectively more Star Warsy. Yeah, exactly. Like Mandalorian, I think Mandalorian is popular because it's it's Star Warsy and it's it's a character who, you know, a very mysterious like character who we never 
really asked for, but is mysterious, so we're intrigued. But I, I right. think Andor is... And it's got enough to do with the Star Wars mythos that yeah. it carries itself. Yeah, Andor is almost nothing to do with Star Wars on a character that no one remembers, but it's so right. good. It's so good, and it's yeah. it's more Star Wars-y than Mandor, Mandalorian because it's it's like this random dude from nowhere fighting the Empire, an underdog yeah. deciding not to be oppressed. It's funny because I don't think it's ever clicked before doing this tier list how obvious it is that the new Disney shows are clearly to expand the mm. pillar of Star Wars and not to yeah. lengthen it, right? Reinforce it. Yeah. yeah, we are we are expanding the universe. We're making it larger. Yes. We are we are broadening the horizon. We're not trying to add yeah. more layers to a tower that's already too high to climb. That's um, why I think the Andor. I think Andor is better than the Mandalorian. Yeah. Again. It's just a little too slow for me to say, like, that I enjoyed. Like, I would rather watch a single episode of Mandalorian rather than a single yeah. episode of Andor. Because yes. it's got more action I and agree. it's faster paced. But I would rather watch the entire season of Andor rather than the whole season of Mandalorian. Yeah, I very much agree. Yeah. yeah. It fleshes out the Empire and the Rebellion in such fine detail that we've never seen before. And I really appreciate that a property like Star Wars is taking the time to actually really flesh out some of its broader, you know, what what was typically a generalized subject, like, oh, the Empire, it's, you know, the evil Empire, or, oh, the Rebellion, it's the Righteous Rebellion. And the fact that Andor yeah. actually goes in and fleshes that out, like, no, there are, you know, th this is a human issue. Yeah. So where are you, where are you thinking? I, I mean, I almost feel like it belongs in A. Yeah, I want, I want to say the same. Is it better than Rogue One, though? That's where I'm kind of like... Yeah, that's a really hard decision, because I love Rogue One. Rogue One is faster paced, it's a little more engaging, but Andor being a TV show that has more time to burn, yeah. it's it's tough. Right, and here we see, the again, the conflict of the mediums, right? Rogue One is a movie, Andor is a TV show. Yeah. They both bring different strengths to the table. Do we want to go bottom of A, or do you want to go just below Rogue One? Mm. What if we move Rogue One to the bottom of A and put Andor the top of B? Yeah, I could do that. Andor, top of B, Rogue One, bottom of A. So, what do we think? Looking over, are there any reorders? I don't think so. Do you want to move Episode 9 from bottom of C to top of D? Yes. Alright, so, from the bottom, Book of Boba Fett just... I wish I could forget it. It's an <laughs> I wish I could forget it. Yes. It is some of the worst writing from a product that is clearly rushed out. Yeah. Um, and the best parts of it come from another TV show, right? Come from yeah. a TV show that it's trying to tie into. Yeah. Obi-Wan Kenobi, great message, great central character, great attempt, great intentions. Uh, but ultimately, it just ends up too illogical, cartoony, and forgettable. Mm. Uh, Solo, very decent movie, but does not feel very Star Warsy. One that yeah, that you forgot existed before we started <laughs> on the tier list here. Yeah, yeah. And then moving up to D for Death Star, we've got Episode Eight, The Last Jedi, which is there for its its illogical plot breaking. Know, yeah, plot breaking canon breaking illogical inconsistencies yeah and rise of skywalker which is above it only because it looks prettier mm. and it handles the characters a little better even though the plot is a complete mess yep phantom menace moving up to c for clone what do we have to say about phantom menace is he back overall good movie for the the star wars fandom just for its time very almost cheesy and weak not very deep weak is a good way to put it yeah yeah Kind of mishandles some of its more entertaining aspects, I think. Force Awakens in C for clone, because it is very obviously just a rehashing of the best Star Wars movie. <laughs> B, Battle Worthy, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, which I have mislabeled as Clone Wars. <laughs> what do we think, Z? Uh, why did we put this in B? Because after episode one, right, this is where the prequels really take a take a step into being a proper... Yeah, they start to build on themselves a little better. Yeah. The plot gets a little better. And as atrocious as things like the romance are, it does actually build up the romance, yeah. which is critical yeah. to and, and becoming Vader. Yeah. 
uh, it handles the political material so much better than episode one. Yeah, it it does show the political beginnings of the empire yeah. and how it devolves into a, a total dictatorship. Yeah, Mandalorian season two, it's good. It's just not Mandalorian <laughs> season one. <laughs> and then Andor, which again does not feel integrally that word right integrally it doesn't feel integral to star wars it doesn't yeah. have quite the f- star wars feel but boy is it a, an amazing show with quite a bit to say moving up into a for awarded we've got rogue one which suffers sort of the same problem as andor doesn't quite match the aesthetic of the original star wars feel and what star wars is meant to be but i think for the better i think yeah. it manages to stand out from the pack in a good way it tries something different and something new and pulls it off enough to to be considered a, a unique perspective on the Star Wars mythos. And then uh, episode three, Revenge of the Sith, which is just, it's the linchpin in everything, right? Mm. It is where we see... Most pivotal point in Star Wars. Exactly. Anything else to say about it? I mean, I, no, not really. I think it's got some of the best action for the prequel trilogy as well. Yeah, uh, I, I think it's, it's, yeah, very engaging. That's what it is, yeah. Yeah. And then Clone Wars, seasons one through six, not one through four. <laughs> um, again, Clone Wars, solid, solid show, right? For yeah. what it was, it managed to excel. It did not have any right to be as good as it was. And sort of the same thing for Mandalorian season one. Just very well plotted, very well crafted, very well structured. It is emotional, it's funny, it's entertaining, and it's got a lot of charm. Right, it's just so charming. Yeah. And up into S tier, Starlight, right? Clone Wars, season seven, which is just hands down some of the best animated television out there Mm -hmm. in terms of quality. uh, And owes, I think, uh, pretty much all of its success to Clone Wars, the previous seasons. Yeah, the rest of it. It's the apex of all the the plots. Exactly. It's, It's the culmination, and they pull it off, you know... I have some issues with the first few episodes, um, but that four-episode finale run is just unlike anything else. Yeah. And then our original trilogy. Yeah. I don't um, think there's much need to be said about that. It's just perfect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Six by four. It is, it is the definition of Star Wars. Yep. Like you, you will never be more Star Wars than the original trilogy. And... Through and through, it is engaging, it is entertaining, it is thought-provoking, it is cinematic, action-packed, and thrilling, oh, cinematic, mm-hmm. right, beyond all belief, and revolutionized the filmmaking industry, not only in terms of how the public perceive blockbusters, but in terms of how music is produced and visual mm-hmm. effects are done, and, I mean, everything, right? It, yeah. It defined, and then immediately redefined what the action film could be what a blockbuster could be yep yeah and it's it's the reason that we're here today almost 50 what 45 years later almost 50 with yeah almost 50 years later with uh i don't even know how how many properties this is one two three four five a lot (laughs) maybe we'll come back at some point in in another year or two when they've released some more shows if we watch more of the shows yeah next season of andor More Mando, maybe a couple yeah, more movies. For sure. Another season of Mando and another season of Andor, we, we could absolutely slot somewhere in yeah. there. Yeah, I am actually pretty surprised that we agreed on so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I like how it turned out too. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of nice that it's, it's pretty clear cut and after a bit of discussion, you and I are able to come to a pretty solid agreement about yeah. where everything should be on the roster, so... Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. Z back. My man, thank you for doing this with me. Thank yeah, you for, of course. for chilling with me and going through this tier list. This was a lot of fun. I'm I'm really glad you were able to join me for it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as yeah, I did. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, we need we need to do this every week. I think that's a pretty good idea. I think it's engaging. Yeah. I I fun. love it. Engaging. Um you know, and, and chat is a little quiet today, but I would love to get more people in here and get their opinions yeah. on where where they think things should rank. 
Yeah, I agree. Thank you all so much for watching. This was a ton of fun, and I'm sure we'll do another tier list like this soon, especially if y'all like it. A very special thanks to Zbax for joining me. Be sure to follow him and me on Twitch so you don't miss out when we do this next. If you're still in the Star Wars mood, you can purchase my hand-painted illustration of Obi-Wan Kenobi over on our Etsy storefront, and be sure to use code STARWARSDAY23 this week to get 10% off. Also, apparently we have channel memberships now, so I guess if you want to support more content like this, you can. Members get special treatment and sometimes early access to videos, along with other things. I'll make a full announcement soon, promise. But until then, I've been Gyro, he's been Zback, you've been amazing, and I wish you all a very happy Star Wars Day. May the Force be with you, and God bless.